This morning we join together for Holy Mass on this day of November, month of the Holy Souls, offering the November Mass for the dead. The Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of May Pinsent, but also throughout this month we remember particularly all those whose names we have placed under the altar here in the Mass and in the other devotions. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and fill their souls with splendour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. We are the real people of the circumcision. We who worship in accordance with the Spirit of God. We have our own glory from Christ Jesus without having to rely on a physical operation. If it came to relying on physical evidence, I should be fully qualified myself. Take any man who thinks he can rely on what is physical. I'm even better qualified. I was born of the race of Israel and of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrew parents, and I was circumcised when I was eight days old. As for the law, I was a Pharisee. As for working for religion, I was a persecutor of the church. As far as the law can make you perfect, I was faultless. But because of Christ, I have come to consider all the advantages that I had as disadvantages. Not only that, but I believe that nothing can happen that will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, sing to the Lord, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works, be proud of his holy name, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord in his strength, constantly seek his face. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he spoke. O oh, children of Abraham, his servant, O oh, sons of the Jacob he chose, he the Lord is our God, his judgments prevail in all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. Alleluia. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. 
And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. What to man among you with a hundred sheep, losing one, would not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the missing one until he found it? And when he found it, would he not joyfully take it on his shoulders? And then when he got home, call together his friends and neighbours. Rejoice with me, he would say. I found my sheep that was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over 99 virtuous men who have no need of repentance. Or again, what woman with a ten drachmas would not, if she lost one, light a lamp and sweep out the house and search thoroughly until she found it? And then when she had found it, called together her friends and neighbours. Rejoice with me, she would say, I have found the drachma I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In my homily on Sunday last for the Solemnity of All Saints, I said that our religion, if anything, is a religion about salvation. God wants to call us to himself. And salvation, of course, redemption, implies that there's something wrong. Something wrong, in fact so wrong, we say in our human nature, that we could never put it right ourselves. We couldn't correct it by our own efforts, whatever it is that we're trying to improve. And so it's always God who comes to the rescue, comes to our aid. And that's exactly what he does in the Holy Mass, because we wouldn't be able to effect this salvation, this pardon of sin on our own. So Jesus Christ comes to our aid, sent by the Father, and offers himself in sacrifice to the Father. God making that act of sacrifice on behalf of mankind. And every time we offer the Mass, for the dead, we're doing this great work of redemption. We think about it especially in this month of November. And that's why this morning, as we do on these ordinary or ferial days of November, we celebrate a Mass for the departed ones. Today we begin uh, another period of lockdown in our land when we can't gather for collective worship according to the government guidelines and it's important that we do, all of us, adhere to those guidelines even if we might think they're a little bit unfair or unjust considering that we've done so much to make sure that our churches were safe places for worship. We can follow, as many of you are doing now, I'm sure, the Mass and the other devotions online during this next month. But the church will be open each day here for private prayer between 11 and 12. The bishops of our country have asked that each evening at six o'clock we pray for an end to the pandemic, we pray for the needs and the intentions of our country. And we'll do this each evening here, live streamed again, unfortunately the church can't be open because it's considered collective worship, but I'll expose the Blessed Sacrament I'll lead the praying of the Holy Rosary at six o'clock and at the end of that um, holy hour, towards seven o'clock, I'll bless the parish with our Lord in the Blessed Eucharist. And as I say, we can follow that uh, each evening online. Do consult the website because it gives you there all of the times of the liturgy each day. By and large, the time that Mass is celebrated here in the church will be the same as it generally is on each day, with the exception of Sunday, when there'll just be the one Mass in the morning at 11.30. Above all, because we've done this before, so we know the routine, let's keep the rhythm of prayer alive. Let's make sure that we've got a good routine, so that in body, mind and spirit, we are connected in ourselves and with each other, remembering that we're all in this together 
that we'd rather not be doing this, but nonetheless to see this as something God has allowed for a while. Throughout these last days now of the liturgical year, the readings at Mass, indeed the prayers, and in the Divine Office, were being reminded and brought into the reality of what we call eschatology, the last things. And the Church lists those last things as death, judgment, heaven, and hell. So as we listen to the readings at Mass, and as we pray our way through this month of the dead, the month of the holy souls, let's ask our Lord to give us the gift of hope, hope in life now, hope in eternal glory. And we pray that the holy souls may have that eternal rest as a result of our prayers and our intercession for their salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather to listen to God's word and to offer sacrifice, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For Francis our Pope, and Alan our Bishop, and all the clergy and people of the church, that they may be given the gift of faith and hope at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who hold public office and who are entrusted with promoting the common good, that they may receive the grace and the inspiration to act always with integrity and sincerity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who continue to work at this time in our essential services, especially those in the health service and also those who work in the field of education. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all who are participating together in this Holy Mass this morning, that we may be filled with hope and trust in God's promise of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Lord, look with favour, we pray, on the sacrificial offerings we present to you for the souls of your servants. And just as you bestowed on them the dignity of the Christian faith, grant them also its reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory, and with him called back into life. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by our cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people who have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervour of the saints.
God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. Let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy. And to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Grant them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. 